Hey everyone and welcome to a new video of the Codebox in Jitagen series. In this fifth video we are going to see how we can use functions inside the Codebox and how this can help us to write better and more functional code. This is what we are aiming for in this tutorial, just creating a bunch of circles uh, going around inside our video and uh, this is what we are going to do. So let's start. First of all I'm just going to delete everything here and let's first define what actually a function is. So a function actually defines a block of code that does a certain function. For example, we can define a block of code and uh, give it a name, for example, call it sum to numbers. Then we create a parenthesis and we input into the block of code, so as arguments to the function. And this is very similar to the arguments we give to max objects. Uh, we give a couple of arguments, for example, x and y. They're separated with a comma. And then what the function will do is to sum these two numbers as the name of the function says. So for example, we will do uh, x plus y. And then this function needs to return these, the result of its internal calculation, so the sum of these two numbers, and so we will write return x and y. Now this return statement means that the function will give back to the rest of the code the result of its internal calculation, so the sum of these two numbers. And this can be used like this. We can create a variable, call it result, and put it equal to the sum of two numbers, and say for example 5 and 6, so the content of the result variable is now equal to 11. So this is how we can use functions inside Codebox. We can create a variable and assign to this variable the result output from this function. And functions usually also have arguments, but not necessarily, because we could use, for example, uh, instead of using two arguments, we could use built-in variables, like for example, uh, norm.x or norm.y, so from the normalized coordinates, and this will not need then to have some input arguments. This will just uh, be an empty parenthesis. So let's see now in practice how we can use this thing inside the code box. So let's create our code box object. Uh, by default, it will just uh, pass uh, the input 1 plus the input 2, but there is no input 2, so this will just be the input 1. And uh, let's start by creating our final color variable, as we always do, and set it equal to input 1, and output 1 is going to be equal to this variable. So we are just passing basically the input 1 out. And now let's create our function that will draw a circle onto the window. So it will set the color of the pixels that form a circle to be equal to a certain color. Um, if you remember from the previous videos, we said that the params uh, statement must be the first uh, statement inside our code, otherwise it would give us an error. So for example, if I create a parameter and call it time, this must be the first statement into our code box. And note also that the P is capital, it's not a small P, otherwise this would not work. The P is capital, but functions must be even before parameters. So functions is actually the thing that must be written before everything else inside the code box. So we can write multiple functions one after the other, but they must be before every other statement inside the code box. So let's create our function and call it like create circle. Good. And this function will take two arguments, the position of the circle and the radius of the circle. Okay. Then we open our curly brackets in which we write inside the body of the function is called, so the content of the function. First, let's create a variable and call it like uh, circle uh, value. And this is going to be the length of the S norm, so the signal to normalize coordinates, plus the position that the circle will have in our window. And then we say again, circle val is actually equal to uh, circle val less than radius. So what does this mean? This means that the if circle val, so if the length of the signal normalized coordinates plus the position is less than the radius, it will, it will give us a 1, otherwise it will give us a 0. So let's say return a circle val. Let's make a test and see if this works. So output 1, we will say create circle. And our position is going to be a vector 2. So let's create a vector and call it uh, circle position is equal to back 0 0 so it will be first with we are not summing anything to the signal normalized coordinates so let's say circle pos and then radius let's say for example 0 
And there we go, that is our circle. It is actually an oval because our rendering window here is not completely uh, square. If the rendering window is a square and this becomes a circle, otherwise it will be adapted to the proportions of the rendering window. So let's make the window a square and we'll have our circle. Now, if we want to assign a color to this circle, we just need to multiply it by a vector representing a color. So let's, for example, create a variable, call it red, and assign it to a vector representing the color red. So now we are in JITGEN, so the alpha is actually the first channel, uh, red is the second, green is the third channel, and blue is the fourth channel. Great. So we just we need to multiply this by red, and we will have now a red circle. So one cool thing about functions is that we can reuse the code of the body of the function multiple times without to actually having uh, to rewrite this code multiple times. So for example, if we now want to create another circle, we just need to create another uh, function, create circle, instead of rewriting the whole code inside the function. So this is what makes functions pretty handy, apart from keeping our code well organized. So let's actually assign this to final color our first circle and then let's assign our output one to final color great so let's now create our second circle and uh, simply just sum it to the first circle so we will say final color plus equal uh, let's first change actually the position of the circle so we will reuse the variable circle pos but set this time equal to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. So let's create our function, create circle. Again with circle pos, this time the radius, let's make it something like 0 0.3. And I have missed something, I wrote this wrong. So this is same, create circle. And great, this is our second circle. Um, let's create another color, uh, for example, green. And let's assign it to equal to a vector that represents the color green. So it will look something like this. One for the alpha, zero for the red, one for the green, and zero for the blue. And let's multiply this by green. And there we go. Since we are summing these two circles together, in the part where they overlap, they will be uh, simply equal to the sum of these two colors. So this will be yellow, because red plus green is actually yellow. Great. And now, actually, we can uh, connect uh, our message here, time, which I simply created by using a clocker um, to have, and having its output divided by 1000. So we get the amount of time since the clocker was activated in seconds. This is our time variable, simply a number that keeps growing. And we can use this time variable to uh, actually animate the uh, for example, the position of the circles. So, for example, uh, our circle position could be the cosine of time, uh, maybe multiplied by 0 0.5 for the x, and then, for example, sine of time multiplied by 0 0.5 for the y, and there we go. We have our circle moving around the bigger circle uh, in a circle. And uh, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. We can multiply, for example, one of the time for a different numbers in order to change the orbit of this second circle. can multiply this, for example, by 0 0.5, and then it will have a different orbit around the bigger circle. So this is how we can create functions inside the code box. Uh, let's try and create another function, for example, which is, uh, let's call it uh, mix... Uh, um, circles um, and movie, just a very, very pretty naive function. This will just mix uh, our circle values with the, the color of the input movie. So let's do like this. We need as input like the circle, uh, actually the circles values, and then also the, the movie. And let's open our curly brackets. So this function I write below the first function. Because as we say, the functions must be written before everything else. And let's create our return value, which is simply going to be equal to mix uh, between movie and circles. Uh, using we will use uh, like circles dot x as our mixing factor. So basically, if the circles have an alpha equal to one. We are going to see the circles, if not, uh, we are going to see the movie. So our final color is going to be equal to the res return value of the mix, circle and movie. 
and as an input value for the circle value we're going to write final color this is the color uh, this is uh, contains the color of the circle for that pixel and then movie is simply equal to input one and there we go we see that uh, if the circles are present then we see the circles otherwise if there are no circles then we see the movie so this seems to have been worked pretty well uh, let's maybe animate also the radius of the circle using time so we will use like the absolute value of the cosine of time for the value of the red circle uh, pretty cool let's maybe make it a bit slower and then we can multiply the result by something smaller so it will just go between 0 and 0 0.3 and let's maybe multiply it by 0 0.5 okay great uh, it's starting to get already a bit confusing i think a bit too crowded so i'm going to stop it here this is just to show you how we can use functions inside the code box it should be pretty clear since it's quite a simple process so if you have questions nevertheless just let me know of course in the comment section and it would be great if you could tickle this uh, like button and this subscribe button and tickle it strongly enough to uh, to subscribe to the channel this will be great and appreciated and um, so thank you very much for following i will see you in the next video have fun and uh, keep maxing ciao ciao